So today's video, I'm super excited about making. I've been getting tons and tons of compliments on the changes that I've been doing to my makeup and how I've been doing it differently. And people are like, oh my goodness, how did you get it to look like that? What have you changed? What filters are you using? No filters here, guys. This is what my face looks like right now. And it's amazing. And when people ask, well, where did you learn how to do it? What have you changed? And how did you change it? To be honest, I started to watch videos like you're watching right now of other people doing makeup and I started to pick up tips and tricks from different people and different makeup artists and I messed around with them and found out what worked best for my skin. And that's all that I've really been doing. It's the same thing, but I just kind of took things from everywhere and put them together instead of following one person's advice. And um, so I figured it was about time that I made this video for you guys since so many of you guys have been asking, well, I, I wanna start contouring, but I don't even know where to start, or I don't know how to do this. All I've ever done is foundation and powder, maybe a little blush, like I'm not a huge makeup person, or I just really wanna up my makeup game and I don't know how to take it to the next level. So I wanted to make this video for you guys to answer your questions and to show you guys exactly what I do every single day in order to get this look. So I hope that you guys really enjoy this video. Please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram. It's carolyn.limelight. So I hope that you guys really enjoy this walkthrough video. Um, I found out it was a lot harder to talk and try to do your lipstick at the same time. I hope you guys find this helpful and enjoy the video. So the first thing that we're gonna do is take our Limelight by Alcone First Base Priming Spray. You want to take this and spray it in an X over your face. And then go ahead and just let that sit in. This gives you a really nice, clean base for all of your makeup to grab onto. And so we're going to go ahead and take our Limelight by Alcone Botanical Foundation. It is a waxed base foundation. It's amazing. Super lightweight and great coverage. And I'm going to go ahead and take my Must Do. And just to show you guys how much I use this, there is no more writing on this because I have held it in my hands and used it so much that all of it has just <laughs> worn off. So you're gonna go ahead and just take a little bit. And this stuff is amazing, guys. You can use it as a moisturizer if you have very dry skin. Um, I use it to turn my foundation into more of a cream that goes on. Um, I even use it on my lips because I get really dry skin right in here. So I'll go ahead and put that on before I put on my lipsticks and stuff for the day, which um, it really helps to hydrate your lips and any dry areas. So I've taken my damp beauty blender and I've gone ahead and just twisted it like one and a half times. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put some circles on my face. Now, one of the things I love, I do put it in circles so that you can see those areas that you need to put it on. And it also keeps you from overusing the product. You don't wanna have too much on so that when you blend it in, you've just got like areas that have way too much. So when you're blending, make sure that you are patting it into your skin. Um, don't swipe everywhere or like rub it because that doesn't really get it into your skin. It gets it kind of on top of it, which creates a layer that you don't really want because that layer isn't going to last as long as if you are patting it into your skin. And so for up here, I do kind of just brush it out on the edges into my hairline so that it kind of blends itself into that natural color up there as well. And for those harder to reach places, um, especially if you've already done your eyes like I have, take the skinny part of it and just dab it right around those so that you can be more precise. And then also up underneath your eyes so that it prevents creasing. Now, if you have some trouble spots, like on my face, um, I've got some zits going on here and one particularly right there. I always go ahead and get just a little bit more of the foundation and put it on because um, that kind of creates like an even layer. So if you have uneven skin, like, uh, like divots, or like if you have zits right now that uh, are like coming off your face like mountains, it kind of gives it an even playing field for when you add the rest of your makeup. 
and then I just go ahead and blend that in as well. And look at the coverage. Like, I don't know if you guys saw the redness in my face before I put on the foundation, but look how like clean and like crisp and like all one color it is. No more red blotchiness. And so if you're not like a huge makeup person and aren't really into like all the contouring and the highlighting and things like that, you don't have to you do all that. I mean, just look at how great my face looks already. And this is without any blush or our setting powder, which would actually get it more matte and less shine. Um, so that's like, our foundation's awesome. I love it, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my foundation brush. And I like to get it just a little bit damp um, so that not as much of the product sticks to the brush and it's actually all going onto your face. So I'm using Limelight by Alcone's uh, concealer. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put it right underneath my eyes and wing it out. So here's a tip. If you guys have really bad under the eye bags, always brush your concealer downward in a triangle um, shape like this, because then that's gonna blend those under eyes down into your face instead of, um, instead of just concealing right underneath the eyes, which isn't gonna look natural. It's gonna look unnatural. Um, and then so for the rest, I always conceal my chin because that is a problem spot for me. I mean, think about it. How many times during the day do you like rest your hand like this or like this or your hands or anything really is touching um, your face and your chin. So that's a really bad problem spot. So I always conceal there. And I always go ahead and do this lovely little flower like thing on my forehead. And here's a tip for concealing, um, especially with contouring. So I have a wider nose. I don't have any problems with my nose. I like my nose. But I do, when I contour, like to make it look a little bit more angular and a little bit more um, like I have a higher, skinnier arch. So I go ahead and I take my concealer and I just go down the middle of it in a very skinny line. And then I put a little bit more on the ball of my nose and bring it down into that widow's peak line. So now is a good time too. I'm gonna put a little bit more concealer on those trouble areas. And since I already did my make uh, my eye makeup before I decided to do the rest of my face, I'm gonna just kind of shape those up a little bit by adding concealer to the edges of it so that it really, really gives it that sharp pointed look at the end that I really like. So to blend in, first I'm gonna start around my eyebrows. I just take my pinky and I'm just gonna rub it in gently. That way that it's not taking off too much of the actual color because I'd be using my blender full, which is kind of hard to get more precision blending. So I'm just gonna use my fingers for that. And then we go back to our damp beauty blender and I have different sides that I use for different things. So the bottom here is what I use for my foundation. And then this lighter side, this skinnier, smaller side over here is what I use to blend my concealer in so that I don't have to have multiple beauty blenders for different products. I literally just use different parts of it and I use the same thing or the same part for every single time that I do my makeup. And the same with the foundation, you wanna make sure that you're patting it down into the skin, especially up underneath your eyes. A lot of people have problems with creasing underneath their eyes. If you blot and pat that concealer and any products that you use underneath your eyes, it's going to get it to sit into that skin and it's gonna eliminate your creasing. It's gonna really make it look awesome. Now, when you go to blend this part of your nose or any trouble spots like my zits that I've got going on right now, take your beauty blender and set it on it and just up and down. Don't really take it off of your skin. At this point, you really wanna get that set into those trouble spots. And so just by doing this without lifting it off of your face, it gives it that blended look, but it still allows that product to sit there. So even up here, don't move it off of your face. Just kind of blot it like that. 
And because this one is in such an awkward place, I'm gonna just blend a little bit right here because I don't wanna get too far in and take off my eye makeup. And with this, I want it to be very skinny. I don't want it to be, I don't want it to like spread out. So I just take very little tiny movements where you're not really taking it off of your face. So that's the concealer part. That's gonna be really good with your highlighting too. So our next step with it is we're going to bake it. Now, a lot of people have been like, I have no idea what this whole baking thing is or what it's about or what it does, but I've seen people do it. And so I get a lot of questions about it. So baking, pretty much what it does is you take a ridiculous amount of translucent powder and you put it on certain parts that you've concealed. And what happens is your body heat, um, it tries to escape through the skin, but since you have that uh, powder sitting on top of it, it doesn't escape out. So it actually bakes your concealer into your skin, which makes it stay all day, and it actually takes away some of the shine and the creasing. It take, decreases your creases. So I always take my Damp Beauty Blender, and for the translucent powder, since it is just a powder, I use the side that I use when I'm using my concealer. And now a lot of people are like, oh, you don't mix powders and wetness. Actually with this, it picks it up enough and it doesn't like have it flinging everywhere. So it actually goes where you want it to go. So I take a little bit at a time because that's my motto. I don't like to put on a whole lot my first time because you can always add more, you can't take away. And so you just get as much of that powder as you can and put it on those areas that you've concealed. Now, a lot of people don't put it everywhere that they concealed. Um, mainly, like I know for me, I like to keep underneath my eyes because that is my biggest problem area with creasing throughout the day. So I like to put it right here up underneath my eyes and on those cheeks. And then I'll also go underneath and I do my chin. These are the two places I will do every single time I bake. Um, mainly be, just because those are my problem areas. For today, I'm actually gonna go and bake just a little bit up here. I'm not gonna put a whole lot of product. And I'm going to put it on those trouble areas with those zits as well. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put it up here. And then pick up what's left and put right here and right there. Just get a little bit. This one up here isn't going to be as big of an issue. And then you're done with your powder. Pour whatever. I always pour my powder into the lid. Whatever you don't use, just go ahead and pour back into your container. And there's going to be fallout. I mean, it's a loose powder. You're going to have fallout. It's okay. It happens. Um, it's actually expected. And so I just go ahead and I wipe my beauty blender off, just kind of like in a motion like this, so that it gets all that leftover um, powder off of it. So we're gonna move on to the contouring part of this. And I've been using um, multiple products for my contouring. Um, my first thing is our Wet n Wild um, contour stick. So I don't like to just use this because it is very dark and it is very noticeable. I like to blend things out a little bit more. But the first thing you wanna do with contouring is look at the top of your ear and draw an imaginary line down to the corner of your mouth. That is your contour line. Now this is for your natural face curve. You can contour to change the way that your face looks. It's amazing. You can put it higher and make it look like you have higher cheekbones or lower if you want more of a soft rounded face. You can do a straight line for angular or you can curve it a little bit to make it look like you have a little bit more of a cheek, a high cheekbone. Contouring is, the possibilities are endless. Um, I actually really enjoy watching videos where people mess around with stuff like that. Um, like people who do cosplay are amazing at altering the shape of their face. Like it blows my mind. I, I know that so many people are like, oh, that's kind of nerdy, but they're good at what they do and they're fantastic at, at their makeup. Like we need to take tips from them. So like I said before, I want to make my nose a little bit more narrow. And so I go ahead and I put it right down the sides and you don't want to have it too close to the inside because when you blend, it's going to naturally go there anyways. So you wanna make sure that you keep it right on the edges. Next, I always do my hairline too, because that's where a natural shadow is for 
for everybody's face. And then I go ahead and I do a little line on my jawbone. <laughs> Sorry, my daughter is downstairs um, singing. So you do the same blotting motion and I use the outside of my beauty blender. And when you're blending in your contour, always blend out. Do not blend into your face because it's going to make your face look smaller. And that's not something that you want. You really want to make it look like it's a natural shadow um, from an angled face. You want to make it look as natural. I mean, let's be real. Contouring just isn't natural. But you want to make it look as natural as possible. So go ahead and do that blotting motion down here on your chin too. And then I just drag just a little bit down into my neck. So that that color and that line isn't as sharp down there. And just look at that. I haven't even done the second step and you can already see my jawbone is more defined. And that's the whole point of it. You wanna make sure that these angles that you're creating and these shadows are well defined. And the same thing that I said before, when you're um, blending in your contour, blend outwards. You don't wanna have a whole lot of product just sitting down here because you blended towards the middle of your face. You wanna blend it up and out. Now when we get to our nose, you want to be really precise with this. You do not want to spread a whole lot in and you do not want to spread a whole lot out. You want to just blend those lines that you put on. So I like to follow what I did earlier and just not really take it off of my face as much. Just kind of do a nice like small little motion that blends it into your skin without spreading it around a whole lot. So next, I'm going to take our Limelight by Outcome bronzer and an angled fluffy brush. I'm just gonna get a decent amount on there. And then we're gonna go ahead and just very, not precisely, but just follow that line that you did earlier. Um, I like this bronzer because it's very warm, which a lot of people say don't contour with warm colors. I disagree. Um, I think it looks better on my skin tone because I do have an olive colored skin. Um, it does have some very unique different undertones. So I like it because it plays into that tanness that my skin kind of has on its own um, from just being in the sun and from living in South Carolina. Um, and so I feel like it just does a really nice soft kind of cover of that harsh contouring, but it plays really well with the color. And it's not as dark as that contour stick. So it kind of lightens it up too. And makes it look like an actual shadow rather than just really harsh, dark lines. So with those areas, you don't have to be very precise. Like I said, it's a shadow. Shadows are different. They're not harsh. They're very kind of flowy in a sense. They blend really well. When you contour your nose, you want it to be more precise. So I always squeeze my brush so that it's very skinny and I just go over those areas that I had that contour. Um, Cause like I said, you don't want it to be blended out too much into your face. You really wanna have those sharp angular um, lines on your nose to give it the kind of look that you're going for. And you don't wanna get it into this area because that, that highlighting that you did with the concealer, that area is gonna make it look higher up than it actually is, which helps give it that narrow look. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna move on to our Limelight by Alcone um, blushes. I'm going to be using this color today. I do not remember for the life of me what number it is. Um, I will find out and put it in the link below. But I go ahead and I take my brush and I just put it on the tip of it. I don't get the color on the whole brush. Limelight's um, blushes are very pigmented, which is awesome because you don't need a whole lot. 
Um, you just need a very small amount and that color really comes through and it lasts all day. So like I said, I just get it on the very edge and then I just follow that contour. I don't like to focus a whole lot in this area. That's a mistake that a lot of people make is they put their blush right here and then they end up looking like a clown. I like to go ahead and put it more towards the outside of my face. And I always start off very light. I don't like to put a lot of color on my first time doing it. Um, you can always add more color. You can't always take away. That is what I live by. And so you just gradually put it on until you're happy with the color. And if you're brushing off some of that translucent powder from the baking, that's fine. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just, it, the fact that you put it on has already made a huge difference in how your makeup is going to look when you're done. And the next step anyways, is to take a flat buffing brush and just go ahead and brush off all that excess. And I like to do it in circular motions to make sure that I'm getting all the nooks and crannies of my face. And so that there's nowhere that the, that setting powder is like clinging onto that I'm not seeing or reaching with my brush. And you don't have to worry about, oh, well, am I, uh, am I blending it into the other colors? Because all you're doing is brushing off the excess. The part that needs to stay on your face is already in your face. Um, it's already baked into that concealer and that foundation. So you don't have to worry about if you're brushing too much of it off. And I don't know if you guys can see it on camera. I hope you can, but like right here, it's nice and matte. There's no creasing. It looks photoshopped. Like it's very clean and very crisp and I love it. And that's what baking does. Um, it doesn't make you look crazy. Like I know at first I looked silly with all that white on my face, but it really does make your entire face just look more finished, more photoshopped, more photo ready. So we're gonna go ahead and set the rest of our face that we've been working on by using our translucent powder by Limelight by Alcone. It's amazing, I love it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just get my powder brush. It's round and fluffy and get our product on it. And you wanna make sure that you're patting it into your skin, don't just like rub because like I've said earlier, and I probably sound like a broken record, but it's so true and so many people do it incorrectly. You wanna really pat that makeup down into those pores if you want it to last all day. You don't wanna just like wipe it on and then in an hour it rub off because you didn't really get a very good set in it. You wanna make sure that you're getting it down into those pores. So the last part of the video that we're gonna be doing um, for the highlighting and contouring part is the highlight. Um, so a lot of people just go ahead and they use their concealer to highlight like I did. I like to take a highlighting powder and go over certain areas that I really wanna pop and have a shimmer to. Um, our Feeling is Neutral palette has a really good color. It's called Peachy Gleam and it's awesome for highlighting. I don't like to use it a whole lot because I use it on my eyes quite often and I like to use a different lighter color um, than what I have on my eyes so that it doesn't look like I just used one color for everything. So I have this little brush right here. This is what I use to highlight and I'll be using Wet n Wild's highlighting powder. I just go ahead, I like to get quite a bit of this on because this isn't as pigmented as most of my other products. So I have to put more on and I have to reapply it throughout the day, but it does its job and I love it. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna smile. And so right here is where I'm gonna start. And I'm just gonna bring that up and blend it up near the wing of my eye. I'm also gonna go ahead and put just a little bit on the widow's peak. And I'm going to put it on my nose on that bridge. So right here, I'm gonna skip this part right here because that needs to look more like a shadow. And then put some right on the tip of my nose. This is gonna make it look like it's sitting higher than it actually is. And it's gonna really emphasize that part. And then I always like to go ahead and highlight right underneath my eyebrows because I don't like to put a lot of actual eyeshadow up there. 
Um, most of my looks that I do with my eyeshadow are very smoky like this. So I don't want those really sharp, heavy colors heading up into this area. So I just highlight to give it some kind of sparkle, but keeping it more of a natural skin tone. And to finish off the whole look, I'm going to go ahead and take our must do and just get a very small amount on my finger and put it on my lips. Go ahead and rub that in. Like I said, my lips are very dry right now. And so must do is awesome for this. And then I'm gonna take our um, one color 100 lipstick and just go ahead and apply that. Now I've had a lot of people say about our lip products that they really don't like to use a lot of liner because they don't really know how to use it um, or they just kind of want the lipstick but they don't know how to make it look good. It's built in. That tip right there, just go ahead and use that and follow your natural lip line. Now with my bottom lip, I do like to overline just a little bit because of the shape of my lips. I have indentions here, 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 and here. So it lifts up here and it pulls down here if I were to follow my natural lip line. Uh, I like to overline the bottom a little bit just to make it look a little bit more fuller. So I put it down a little lower here to connect it down to this lowest part. On my upper lip, I keep my natural widow's peak and then I follow that indent down and I don't overline my upper lip. This way, that lower lip is really full and that upper lip still has that natural curve, which is how I like my lips to look. Um, I feel like it looks better on me than if I were to overline the upper and the lower lip. It's entirely up to you and your lip shape, how you decide to do it. That's just my personal preference. And so now we are done. That is how I do my look. That is how I do my contouring and my highlighting and everything else um, after I get my eyes done for the day. Um, you can always do it backwards and go ahead and do all that first and then do your eyes. There is no right or wrong way. That's what I love about makeup. It's all about trying new things and expressing yourself and finding things that work for you. Um, not anybody, I mean, nobody is the same. Everybody does things different and everybody has different looks that work for them. This is what I do. I know a couple of you guys have been asking. So this is how I do it. And this is the look that I have and I love it. And now I'm ready to go for the day.